Hello YouTube, this is Marauders here and now we have the Asus Vivo Tab Note 8. So this is yet another Intel Bay Atom Bay Trio uh, 8 inch tablet, 8 inch Windows tablet. And um, let's get on with it. So the first thing is that if you look at the screen, I think you can see from the light reflections here, the the screen is one of the worst kind of fingerprint magnet I've ever seen on on one of these tablets. It really attracts fingerprints very fast and very easily. In fact, that's the main reason why I didn't wipe it down before doing this recording. Uh, just to be able to show you guys that it's really bad at, at fingerprints. Then for the main body design it's uh, it's actually a bit different compared to the other tablets that I've seen it's actually two pieces of plastic so there's uh, one at the back and one at the front so it's two pieces clamped in together uh, there's a little ridge here that gives you a, some of a feel of when you're gripping it but uh, nothing doesn't nothing too much a few use a bit cheap though the uh, so slightly rubberized back for the for the back um, probably shouldn't scratch looks like it's fully black to begin with uh, at the bottom here this is where the pen is so the shell actually feels a bit hollow at the bottom it creaks a little and the processor seems to be on this part this part of the tablet so when you're watching videos or playing games or doing anything it's CPU intensive this is the part that gets hot in case that's what you're interested in and these two lines here are the speakers which uh, I guess there's that's a very funny place to put the speakers because well I guess it depends on how you watch the video or how you are watch using the system because when you put it down the speakers are pretty much covered so I don't know why they decided to put it there um, audio volume pretty standard not going to not going not drastically different or anything then if one more thing at the back here is the ultimate the reason the viewer tab note 8 is so special this is a digitizer and it's stored in the tablet itself which is something that I've really been looking forward to this is a Wacom digitizer so there's no need to have some funky 4A battery powering it and of course it has all the pressure sensitivity and everything get back to that now on the top here is where you find the power button Okay, wait. Just there's a power button, and there's a and the volume button as well. Mic jack, uh, not mic, earphone jack, and USB port, which is also the charge connector. Nothing at the bottom. And then on the side here, we have this is the we have the Windows button and the micro SD slot now the interesting thing here is that what I have here is a 32 gig version of the VivoTap Note 8 so instead of wasting space putting the recovery partition on the tablet what ASUS did is that they put it on the micro SD card itself so if you need to so don't be surprised if you also bought a 32 gig version that you find a free SD card inside this, the, the tablet. It's not actually this, you probably don't want to use this as a, don't want to format this and use this as your own storage. You want to just keep it safely around. Okay, let's put that back. And, uh, okay, that's it for the... So that's it for the outer appearance. Now we get on to some of the 
other interesting questions which is the first thing of course is you know, just like any other normal window normal tablet appliance uh, of course it's not really an appliance any other normal tablet everyone would like to know hey can we how much can we actually charge it through an additional USB battery pack so that well I can use it for even longer than this than actual time so here's my trusty uh, USB power meter let's plug it in and we can see that it is charging oops just okay so we can see that it's charging properly and basically it's just using up well, it's actually used drawing less than 1M from the battery itself but the main thing here is that it is charging without and the use of any power booster or anything so no problems charging using this with an external battery so even though the onboard battery life is probably the usual six to eight hours for an atom beta tablet but the fact that you can easily use any other battery pack to charge this uh, you essentially can make it last much longer now another thing that you might have realized as I was going showing you all the ports on the external side is that you do notice that there are there aren't any video out ports on this thing so there's no there's no external HDMI out so just like uh, just like just like any other just like the Dell Venue Pro you can't connect this thing to uh, using HDMI and I'll put it to the screen so what you can do is either you use mirror you use a mirror cast so you can project this using mirror cast or you get a USB to video out dongle and basically I've already covered those two scenarios I'll link them into the video here so you can you can check out the links on the in the description so you can check out the links in the description later okay now let's talk about the most interesting thing about the Vivo Tab Note 8 which is the digitizer so the Asus Vivo Tab Note 8 is basically just like any other Atom Beatrio Windows tablet that I've that I've already sh reviewed before it's essentially the same process it has the same processor as the Acer W4 so performance wise it's going to be more or less the same but of course what change what's the different thing about the Vivo Tab Note 8 is of course the digitizer the fact that it has a digitizer this pretty much means that what you have what the Asus Vivo Tab Note 8 is the ultimate lightweight note taking machine because I, with a digitizer as if you've seen my many other videos that I've been talking about all, all for all these years is the digitizer is better than any stylus because you can actually rest your hand on the screen while you're writing because the the system essentially will know how that it needs to track the special pen instead of tracking the touch caused by your hands and let me just lock this orientation right now okay so you can write very easy with the with a digitizer and you can perform minute great nice smooth minute writings that's another difference between a digitizer and a normal cap capacity stylus with a digitizer you can do very tight curves very close and tight curves so that is essentially what writing is very close tight curves 
with a capacity stylus, no matter what you use, including if you use a jog or anything, it will be depending on what screen, what touch screen you're using, it will be very hard to achieve consistently tight, small, tight curves like this. Big groove circles like this, easy enough. Small things like this, not so easy. So that's why if you know you take a lot of notes, you use you you know the power of one note, the the fact that you have a digitizer is going to be a god sent to you. Now even though because of that I'm actually very biased to the fact whenever anyone makes a Windows tablet and decides to include the digitizer on the inside the tablet itself because not enough people actually do that I mean for in the first place including a digitizer or it makes a, makes something that's already straining at cost elements to make it make it very even more expensive and uh, and the fact that they have to hold out is real it's really great that they decided to make some space so they can actually hold the pen in there so I really like this I really want to be able to just tell you hey this is it this is the best with 8 inch Windows tablet you can get you should probably go out and buy one if you're waiting to get one but unfortunately there's one little problem here the issue here is that on the internet you can actually see that there are many people who have been posting that the digitizer driver or it, it could be even be the hardware it just stops working all of a sudden and that it's because of that reason I've actually I've actually taken so long to come up with this review. I actually got this unit about a month ago and I've been just constantly using it for that particular for the whole month just to make sure just to try and see if my digitizer actually fails. Now you might ask, does it take that long, that fast to fail? Yes, because I have a friend who actually bought the same VivoTap Note 8 on my recommendation and his drive, his digitizer driver is already showing problems it will just basically fade in and fade out he has to restart, luckily for him he can restart the tablet and get it to work so what I've been doing uh, the first thing I do for the past month is I would start up my I will start, I'll start up the tablet, I will wake it up pull out the digitizer and just hover it around the screen and well say a little prayer whenever whenever I see that the the style the digitizer is actually still working so that's the issue here I mean this should have been the best Windows tablet the one that I can actually recommend to everyone to buy is if they are looking for Windows tablet and yet Asus decides to screw it up a little. So we have a build build issue here. So uh, it's obvious that the digitizer defect isn't happening to every single single Vivo Tab Note, but it's enough of a of an issue for you to be concerned with. So if, when you if you're thinking of getting this, remember that there might be that digitizer issue and it might give you problems now for those of you who are wondering so this is the this is a Wacom feel digitizer you cannot use as far as I know you cannot use any other Wacom pen on this you cannot use a bamboo anything from the bamboo touch you cannot obviously use an Intel's pen what you have to do is you need to find other pens which are for the OEMs if you choose to replace this. So that will mean that you can use the Surface Pen, the Surface Digital, the pen for the Surface Pro. You can also use the pen for the Samsung Galaxy Note series, the, the S Pen. 
and they will, you you can all of them will work with this and vice versa and okay that's it for the viewer tab note 8 nothing much to say since it's pretty much the same as any other other windows tablets and and basically I would love to give a glaring recommendation for this but there is that build issue you could wait a bit and see it. wait a few more months and make sure well the batch that my friend and I got was the February batch if I remember yep it's a February 2014 batch maybe wait a while and see if the if a later batch would uh, maybe a later batch might actually fix the problems other than that uh, that's it okay hope you enjoyed this video and we'll I'll come back with one last comparison of all the Atom tablets that I have and we'll check out what this generation has to offer then okay see you all around